this was real. What is this? I have a very set method on how I travel alone, so I take out some time at the top of my day. It's like time budgeting to fully break down all of my plans, and I mean everything. Which neighborhoods has what, what route, mode of transportation, I screenshot each individual train, the station, all of it. And I put all the screenshots in a separate new album on my phone in order of my day planned. And I will start the plans, but I never pressure myself to stick to it. I often just wander around midway when I find something interesting and adjust as I feel. Uh, but even if I don't stick to it, I've always found it so helpful to have a guide. And it also makes me feel very confident and competent to carry myself around while I'm venturing alone halfway across the globe. And I think that confidence and self-assurance goes a long, long way. The specs from Korea, I think it's like a sportswear brand. It looks like a bowling bag. Dress and the headscarf from my friend Ruby. Thank you, Miss Ruby June. If you saw the plain dress up at Ruby June's house, that's where it's from. And sneakers from, what is this brand? Rag and Bone. And also socks from Korea. Meep, meep. Check it, check it. I found comfort in the fact that there was a Korean chicken restaurant right next to the hotel I was staying at. I gotta tell you, with the rise of K-pop and Korean food globally, it is a good time to be Korean. <laughs> Perfect, thank you so much. <laughs> Pose awkwardly. <laughs> thank you guys. Do, do you want the full? Sure, that'd be great. Okay. All the options. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I absolutely love this guy. So there's this expression in Korean, and it's, it goes like, <laughs> It translates to, would a sparrow fly past a mill? <laughs> no, of course not. Izzy would never just walk past a bookstore. <laughs> Got these two postcards to send to my friends back home. Moom inciting, moom inciting, moom inciting, moom inciting. <laughs> I almost got this David Hockney book. You know how much I love David Hockney. I didn't, knowing I already have an overloaded suitcase, which I still have to transport across countries. But I did, however, decide to get this other book very last second because I had too strong of a pull to it to not. But actually, that other book I got last minute did end up changing my life. <laughs> I'm more on that later because I'm still, when I'm recording this voiceover in Amsterdam, I'm still only halfway through. But yeah. I went to the Tate Modern and a lot happened at the Tate Modern. I can't get into it all in this video. If you want to hear or know what happened, you can find it on this post on Clown Life Izzy on Instagram.
lot happened after that museum visit in the rest of my London trip, and I had a wonderful time. I typed out an entire three-page script as I was on my trip while I was on it, trying to desperately preserve every detail of what I saw and what I felt, but now that I'm actually editing these clips together, I can see that I don't need any words at all. I think they just speak for themselves.
want to say this. People often also ask how. Not as often as why, but they ask how. How are you able to move across the world alone without being scared? It's because of moments like this. Moments where I'll stumble into a bar at a random spot in this new city that someone recommended in my Instagram DMs. I stumble in, order myself a beer, and the piano man plays a song that was always a cheesy karaoke staple where I grew up in Korea. Strangers sitting across from me sing along, out loud, and I can too. I know all the words. There came a point in my life where I started realizing why cliches were cliches. Art knows no boundaries, it connects across countries, gender, age, and race. Cliches are cliches because no matter how many times you try to deny it, they end up still being true. How comforting. A tale as old as time. The human experience. How lucky we get a shot. <laughs>